yeah, naturally you want to coddle your son, especially living in this world. Mm-hmm. I want to coddle my black son, but the thing is, is he would have a father that's also there to show him different right. things that I would never be able to. Now, moving on, we would later um, see you in the film, Baby Boy. Right, right. And that was, I think, probably one of your earliest, like most notable roles. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was so excited to be a part of Baby Boy. Was the process of that like hard to get involved? It was everybody. I mean, I remember pretty much every actor in Black Hollywood was uh, auditioned for one, some role in Baby Boy. And I remember uh, I was there for an audition at John Singleton's office. Mm-hmm. And um, he happened to be there that day. And he was super interactive with everybody that was auditioning. And he came up to me, asked me which role I was reading for. At the time, I was reading for a different role. And um, th- I thought he was just asking. And I-, I didn't know he was going to be in the room because I actually didn't have a director mm-hmm. session. It was an uh, it was an audition with casting, as far as I knew at the time. So when I got in the room, he was in the room, and I read for a couple different characters. And it was it was great. And I actually, after that, I don't think I heard anything for like three months, <laughs> two mm-hmm. months. Maybe I-, I can't remember the exact time frame because mm-hmm. actors, you know, time our time, you know, we. One week can seem like three months, but I do remember it was actually a very long time. I didn't hear anything. And then I heard something after a couple of months, maybe, and I, I did a table read. Mm-hmm. I did the table read, but I actually still hadn't booked any specific role. So I didn't book the role until after the table read. Wow. Yeah. Did you replace somebody? No, I didn't replace anybody. Okay. They were just, I think they were just, try- well, at least as far as I know, as far as I know. Um, but I think they were, they were just trying to situate what, who was going to go where, maybe. You know, maybe he liked a couple of different actresses for different roles and was just trying to situate it, I think, maybe. But it, it definitely, it wasn't a quick process for me. It mm-hmm. was kind of a long, not not even saying that I went in back and forth so much. It was more so just like a waiting game. Now, um, Baby Boy, that's actually, I think some people don't know the depth of that movie. Mm. If you um, are familiar, Dr. Francis Quest Welsing, Mm-hmm. was an author mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it was helped is that true that it helped inspire this movie you know what i maybe have seen an interview or something but ah you might actually be schooling me yeah. um, i know in the beginning of the movie there is i feel like there's a is there a mention of that maybe in the beginning i know when he's in uh because it's it's a deep it's a deep movie i'm going to kind of touch on some of the themes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah it's but, a lot of layers but yeah like Dr. Francis Cress Welsing um, yeah. wrote a book in that it allegedly is in, helped inspire Baby Boy because you're talking about the man child. Mm-hmm. You're talking about brothers that they're grown men, but they still have like immature or, you know, behavior that needs some grooming or, you know, how do I say it? In, in, in our community, sometimes men don't fully probably step up to the plate as they should. Maybe they didn't have the examples. And that's the, that's the reason for it. But the results of it is you do have like these men, child that go around that women have to deal with and other right. men have to deal with. So right. yeah, let's unpack that a little bit. Like doing the movie, was that like on your mind of like what the message of the movie was or what did you get out of the movie? At the time, I would say when I was 17, I wasn't as, I was aware, mm-hmm. but I, I don't feel like I was as, aware as maybe I am now. I definitely feel like I've matured and I see things a lot bit, uh, a lot differently from a different lens. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely understood. I remember when we did the premiere, uh, the, the response was so major, especially from men, the reactions and the uh, just the enthusiasm. It was like a lot of people felt seen. Mm-hmm. A lot of people felt seen watching yeah. Baby Boy. There was a story, well, I was trying to pull up a headline, but the headline comes from the Orlando Sentinel. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is when Baby Boy came out. The headline reads, Baby Boy gives black men an excuse for failure. Hmm. That's somebody's perspective. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'm sure that I would have to read it. Maybe there's more, you know, because there's all the headlines are one thing, and then sometimes right. you get into the context and the content. They give you the whole, and you kind of try to understand where. What the, did you What did you get out of the the messaging of the movie? I feel like it was a story that needed to be told, or you know, I feel like sometimes you have to see yourself 
in order to it's like a part of healing also mm -hmm. you know you don't you you don't always agree with everything you see or you don't always really even understand it fully or you don't you know you, you don't have all the, the parts and the pieces but you have to look mm -hmm. you have to look so i felt like it was a necessary story that only really john singleton could have told right. in that way right yeah um but that was pretty much like it seems like as I'm looking at like old articles on it, I guess they were trying to maybe this was someone that wasn't a part of our culture. You know, yeah, they always try to say something. Writing these writing these type of headlines and not understanding, like you said, not seeing the examples in our households. Right. And and that contributes to a lot of different dynamics. Just not understanding the history. Um and just not understanding that is also like it was set up that way. <laughs> the, the system has we it hasn't been set up for us to win. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is all very strategic, you know. So, um, yeah, I definitely feel like a lot of people will, you know, write about something or want to talk about something. And I'm even sensitive about talking about certain things just because, you know, this is just, these are sensitive subjects. But I feel like a lot of people are very bold with things that they'll say not having all the facts or yeah. not even completely understanding something but you can't fault people for having their opinion yeah. <laughs> but, but they can be they can be wrong in your eyes or you can disagree respectfully or also you know let them know exactly why you disagree sometimes so in this in this I'll read this article and then I have a, a question from your perspective okay um yeah it says um, this is from the Herald Extra this is just the opening of how they, I guess, perceive the movie. The first thing we see is a black man curled up in a womb. Mm. The first thing we hear is a voice over explaining a psychologist theory that black men are babies, that because of racism, the black African-American man remains unform an unformed person, infantilized, immature, and incapable of exploiting his own fullest potential. Mm. So I think a lot has changed because the the conversation, I do feel like there's a level of awareness now. Um, myself, growing up in a single parent household, I'm aware of the effects that might have had by not having a father. So I'm consciously like trying to autocorrect myself yeah. along the way. And some other men, you know, aren't fully aware of those effects as well. But just from your perspective, why do you think black men at the time or even now? are labeled baby boys. Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel like, you know, the single parent households and, and, and women raising men, you know, and only, and them only having a mother, yeah. and not a father, it, it will change how you see the world. It will change how the world sees you. It will also mm -hmm. just, it'll affect the, what you learn and mm -hmm. what you see. Like there's a reason that we need, we, the, a father figure is necessary. A mother figure is necessary. But when a black man does not have his father, it changes his life in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And um, it also, it kind of, yeah, it, 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 you can get emotional if you actually think about it because, you know, they're just missing it's just a piece missing, a huge right. piece. And whether they talk about it or not, or whether it's um, discussed often, you know, it, it's, it's just, it, I've seen the effects of it. On, yeah. uh, um, most of the men that I know and most of the men that I love grew up in a fatherless home. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see some of the things that they deal with. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, I definitely feel like it affects affects them but at the same time I don't feel like it limits them I feel like black men are capable of anything mm -hmm. they are capable of all the greatness mm -hmm. so at this point it's I guess it's like a kind of accepting certain circumstances and and, and being intentional like you said you auto correct sometimes mm -hmm. or, or you notice certain things and that's really all we can do is keep get, getting better every day being aware noticing and just keep rising above the odds because it, we are definitely and have been against all odds for for quite some time. Right. So. So, and then um, this is kind of my last part of, of that particular um, film. You notice that uh, Tyrese's character played the uh, quote unquote baby boy. Right. And he's experiencing all these different dynamics. And right. I guess according to this theory, he was experiencing these things because he didn't have a father in his life mm -hmm. to give him that stability. 
Mm -hmm. Um, What are your thoughts about when it comes to um, Mm -hmm. black mothers over coddling their black sons? Man, I, but I, I get it. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that it happens and I'm, I'm sure I'm sure it needs to be. Um, there, there's always something that could be adjusted, but I can't imagine being a single mother of a black man in this world. Like. You want to coddle them, you, you want to, you know, that would be your natural instinct. I feel like a mother is just a woman is just giving um, her son her what her, it is in her nature what you know what I mean so the fact that I feel like the fact that the father isn't there it's not necessarily like she's thinking about that so a lot of things you have to times you have to become aware of certain things you have Mm -hmm. to force yourself to become aware because yeah naturally you want to coddle your son especially living in this world Mm -hmm. I want to coddle my black son but the thing is is he would have a father that's also there to show him different things that I would never be able to yeah I think it's like a, a balanced perspective because it, I do think it does hinder it, some of our brothers. I'm sure that it does, but I, I can understand how that would happen. So right. I definitely think family structure mm-hmm. is it is helpful. It, I love when I see a black family. I love when I see a black family because yeah. I understand how much each person is necessary, how much the mother is necessary, how much the father is necessary. And so I, you know, that that's one of the things that brings me the most joy is seeing black families, but not everybody and not most of us have, you know, had that luxury to grow up like that. <laughs>